high class. I am intentionally not looking my best today because, well, looking our best is overrated and I wanted all of you to feel that you had at least someone that you looked better than. So, I regret that I am not attending the reunion. I'm very sad. I'm in Asia. I've been here around 10 years. And I've gotten to see my dear mother only once. Uh, I came over here because Obama was being elected or something like that around about that time. And the trend had been governors. I think that goes back to Jimmy Cotta. I don't, maybe even, sorry, don't tell anybody, but I'm not sure what Nixon's background was, if Nixon was a governor. But before that, I know for a long time, the trend was senators. And I had a feeling, I just had a feeling that Obama, the senator, and Hillary, that we weren't going back to senators. I just had a feeling that after Obama, the trend would be businessmen. I was right. And, I mean, you guys made Laura and I class politicians. And, I mean, I'm honored. I mean, it's, it, it's, we were, you were, you're prophets. What can I say? You're prophets. So, I, I actually predicted Trump would get elected. Like, I went on Instagram and I predicted it. So, one for Jesse. But, I had a feeling it was going to be businessmen for a trend for some time. I didn't know how long. I thought it was going to be for many years. But then, after that that it was going to be people with international experience because America needs to understand other countries. It's not about agreeing with other countries. It's just understanding them. I mean, even the hunter tries to understand the deer. It doesn't mean you agree with the deer, but at least you understand it. So understanding is not about agreeing with people. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But Americans, just we live in a bubble. We don't even understand to agree or disagree. So I wanted to go live in other countries and just plant myself so that I could understand what's going on. And boy, let me tell you, I have learned so much. Um, I would have probably talked to everybody a lot more than I did. But I realized two years ago, no, not even two years, maybe half a year ago, maybe my math's getting inverted. Uh, on that long bus ride, and, and we on that bus, uh, no, it was like the second longest bus ride. It was the one with Guy Lewis, you know, the, the guy, he plays Santa. Well, okay, so it was that bus. And it was this great big huge guy on it a few years older uh, than, than our class. And he would like punch me all the way. And I, I never like on the arm or something, I, I never occurred to me that that might be a shaping experience in my life until like a few years ago. So I get to school and, <laughs> and, and so, uh, anyhow, but I'm over it. Um, but you know, the, the things that, that we go through in childhood that we don't know are happening, good, bad, uh, neither, neither good, just they happen. We just don't know. We just don't know. And I'm just so happy that we who went through all those years together can get back together and, and keep life going. So I really regret that I'm not there with you all. So I'm making this video and I can say this to everybody. Uh, I think it'd be boring to go through the whole long list, but I've got a few names of some things that I would say. And if you're not on the list, yell at me and, and hit me up because I do miss you all. Joshua Buck. I am so happy that I punched you. We were great friends after that ninth grade. Adam O'Brien, I'm so happy that I got you that detention in the eighth grade. I also had a detention. Uh, Joshua Buck uh, knows about that. Kane Smith, it was awesome serving detention with you. I'm sure everyone who ever served detention has said the same thing. But Kane, you helped me open my mind. It wasn't in detention because we couldn't talk. But in the hallways talking, your wild, weird, rebellious thinking. I mean, you know, Rebels are thinkers, you know, uh, not that you're either. I don't want to 
you know, categorize you. I'm just saying that you helped me think. Thank you. Gary Bailey, um, Section 8, mm, uh, you know what? I've already set off a buzzword, so everyone's going to talk. I actually got a soprano saxophone, and it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with you. I didn't even think of you at all when I, 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 you weren't even on my mind. Although, Julie uh, loved playing French horn and Nate uh, together. Like, that was fun together. But uh, anyhow, Gary. I got a, it's a soprano sax. Uh, Kenny G got me onto those. And I had to sell it because I ran out of money. It was really a shame. But saxophone is the easiest instrument to play. Poorly. But speaking of Gary, I'll never forget the day in band class. It was a substitute teacher. And Jennifer then Franklin was directing. And pur purportedly, she was standing on, on the, the, the podium. I, I think she was on the box. I, I believe she was. But you raised your hand and you said, um, excuse me, uh, could you please step up on the podium? And she wanted to be angry so bad, but she couldn't. She just, it was this, you know, and it was, uh, so I wanted to thank you for that. Speaking of Jen Newman, uh, who you could argue that she married up uh, in maybe more than one way, uh, but she was really hoping to be there with you all at the reunion. And I hope you're not playing this during the reunion. I hope that you're watching this on some other time. But uh, Sean, definitely Jen married up, literally. And uh, hats off, love redhead spew. I, I was a redhead when I was really, really little. I don't, like, here's my, I got my, my, my red all fell down to my face. Um, well, no, I think I've got, see, I didn't wear my hat because I wanted... I wanted you guys to be able to compare because I think that I actually am doing better than many of you guys. Um, Katie Samuelson. Oh, there's so much to say. I actually worked at Pizza Hut. And that seventh grade dance was just, it was so amazing, you and I. And uh, I think, was it, who else was, there were like only two other people that were dancing there. But we, I don't think the class knew this, it was seventh grade, winter break had just gotten out, downtown was a ghost town, and my mother had picked me up from school, and, which wasn't normal, and I was sitting at the beauty salon waiting for my mom to get her hair done. And I'm sitting there by the window downtown, and Katie walks by, turns around, like bends over, and plants this big old fat kiss right on the window, leaving the, the, the lipstick was, I could see it, like looking at, and... And the beautician like flips out. Did you see that? Did you? And so she went off on that. That was um, made her day. And for the record, that beautician actually was cutting my hair since I was five at Paris. Just so you know. But um, Katie, I'll tell you what. Really awesome experience. And Dana Esterly, I really should have taken you out in the seventh grade. But uh, that could have gotten Katie off my butt. Literally. Um, Joshua Chupp, you need to be in like activism or write or do causes like step on that seriously, like do it. And speaking of Josh, we've also got Tori Rogers, Brian Cass, Eric Knapp, Donna Robinson. Uh, we should have carpooled. I mean, seriously, long bus ride, you know, what in the world? And, and, uh, Eric, my dad actually bought gas at that gas station when it was a gas station, just so you know. Donna Robinson, um, the class didn't know this, but our, our middle fingers have the same, like, uh, fingernail, like those are the middle fingernails. Did you see the middle fingernail thing? Like that's, that's the writer's fingernail. And Donna and I have the same middle fingernails. Just, you know, that was just cool to say. Clint, I actually, I kept my promise. I went up there and I prayed, um, there's a, pardon me, history of Reed City. There was this old lady uh, up in Snob Hill. I'm, I'm not going to say what it's officially called, but we all know what Snob Hill was. And she was actually related, Helen Massey, she was related to Valkers. Uh, Valker the farming. A lot of people call it Volker, but it's Valker. That's her brother up in uh, Big Rapids, the, the farming equipment place. But uh, it's near the airport, but uh, her father started it. It was in Reed City 
she passed away a few years ago. I, I did a little video of her actually on my YouTube channel. She plays piano and stuff. Helen, um, she always referred to, to Sunday morning as churchianity. She was a praying lady. Anyhow, I asked her about the history because she, I mean, asked the Thompsons. She could go on about stories. And I got a lot of her stories on video. They're on my YouTube channel. But apparently in the earlier, early settlers, this is important Reed City history. You've got to know this. The white man, I'm part Cherokee, so we want to be called Indians. The white man was settled down by the river, of course, logging industry, etc. And the agreement was that the white man would not impede on uh, the Indians' territory to the west. Well, as the settlements grew, the white man wanted more land, and they started fighting with the Indians. And there was there's a longitude, uh, kind of, where these roads cross at this one point from up by Reed City all the way down to about where the old middle school was in Big Rapids. And when roads cross that longitude, they're just all these freak car accidents. I was in one of them. I flipped my car over right by uh, Big Rapids Middle School going in on that little tiny road. And like it shouldn't have happened. And... Um, she, Helen says that that area right there is where a lot of the, the, the fighting between the white man and the Indians happened, and they called it the Trail of Tears. And it, it eventually resulted in Chief Osceola being given a settlement down in Florida, and all of the celebration in Osceola County of Chief Osceola was because of that conflict. So um, the Christian in me... Uh, yes, I studied Bible in college. Um, the the Christian in me, I, I'm, I'm not a Sunday morning fan. Helen would call Sunday morning churchianity. Interesting thing. Um, I've only I had known the best kept secret about Sunday morning that Sunday morning was not necessary. Jesus, Bible, and no Sunday morning. I would have been much more sufferable across the board. Believe me. So thank you all for pardoning me. My nickname Ned was well earned. Thank you. So. Uh, Anyhow, um, Helen called that, uh, she said that was called the Trail of Tears. And I believe, you know, going, when, when someone's killed and it's not fair for some reason, I believe that you get like a thing, maybe a demon or something that latches onto that area. There's an argument for this. And just going there and praying for the w riches of King Jesus to pay it all off and just to forgive it can stop those freak accidents from happening. And that's, that's my humble little belief. And uh, when I found out uh, what happened with Clint, I, uh, I, I thanked him for the information and I went right there and I prayed. So wanted you guys to just uh, know that random history. Willie Jacobs, I still have the knife that your father gave me with the initials in it. Uh, darn it, we should have talked more in school. But anyhow, love you tons. Hope you enjoyed your meal when I saw you at Ruby Tuesday. Michael Wright, what a sacrifice you gave to be with the best class. Roberta, I still have not yet read War and Anti-War, but it is on my list of things to do, and I promise I will. Eric Estrada, if I can find a modeling gig for us, I'll, 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 you know, okay. Charlie Bop, my mother actually babysat Timmy, for the record. And speaking of babysitting, Deborah Sherman, y you know, every time I see you in my mind, uh... You're smiling and you're laughing and it just makes me happy. And I just wanted to say that. But uh, my mother actually, I think, like, dent? I don't know what it was. My, my mother had a... She, she babysat for people. Mike Bloom. I'm sorry. All I can think of is the bank as, and that stupid tie. That's all I can think of. But cheerio. Nick Rennie. Uh, I never realized this until later, but you actually were doing bodybuilding before bodybuilding was a thing. Just a little bit of a futurist there going on. Jesse Fitzgibbon. Okay, only, I'm not saying this to be serious, okay? We'd always call each other Jesse because it was fun. I don't know if the rest of you knew that, but like Jesse and I have this joke, we'd call each other Jesse. And usually no one was around when we were doing it. it like, like we would be the only people in the hallway. And this would happen a whole, like a lot. But... I'm supposed to say, in honor of the stupid humor of high school, you know it's coming. Has anyone ever asked if Gibbon fits Jesse? All right. Um, anyhow, uh, Juanita, I always believed that you looked excellent in purple. 
Jason Ripley, I'm happy that you're happy. Speaking of Jason's, Jason Culp, you should know by now that all nitrates are soluble. And uh, Jennifer, uh, did you get married in a courthouse? Cheerio. How, you know, the, the whole marriage debate, get government out of marriage. Why do conservatives want government to have an opinion about marriage when conservatives want government out of everything? I don't get that, but, uh, okay, Andy Butts, has anyone ever told you, well, I've always wanted to, I don't care if anyone's told you, Andy, I've always wanted to tell you that your last name is cute. Mandy Perez, I stopped picking my nose, um, and speaking of quitting, uh, Jamie Catlett, the reason that I was crying when I, uh, when we met at the park, uh, before going into ninth grade, you're like, why are you crying? And, and we were there. I was there practicing the rifle thing with, uh, with the rifles, you know, the, the, the sticks that we'd throw. And anyhow, the reason I was crying, I never told you, it's because you were smoking. And I just wanted you to know. Um, yeah, yeah, like you were smoking. And, and I don't use this as evidence. I think we're past any statute of limitation. But I, I just really made me sad because my Jamie was smoking. And I wanted you to know that, that I quit uh, last week. In fact, I also quit yesterday. Um, in fact, you know, smoking is for quitters. Uh, Jamie, I really just love you a lot. Does he, where am I on this list? Uh, I got to, Robert Williams. I always thought you were a terrible trumpet player, but you really looked amazing in those band uniforms. I don't know. You just made the uniform look good. Like, Really? Uh, Bill Webster, we never really hung out much except at Andy's uh, birthday party in, in kindergarten. Uh, but anyhow, whatever. Jeremy Weller, uh, blog about politics, please. Uh, Wartney, take down those racist, bigoted Trump posts on Facebook. I like Trump too. I'm just saying, knock it off already. Tom Skazinski, I'm still up for playing Rhapsody in Blue. I hope you have the book that I bought you. Kevin Sims, I found a Kung Fu master in Asia who teaches MMA. He also teaches Wing Chun. You know, uh, it's uh, Yong Chun Chun. Uh, I'm sorry. I learned a little bit of Chinese over here in Asia. But uh, Wing Chun, the, 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 the Bruce Lee... Uh, like, actually, the way Bruce Lee would do his famous one-inch punch, it's the proper way to punch. It's like, there's this, your punching should work like this. It's like a, and like you take your hand and like, and you you have this shoulder action that goes, and so like, it's boom. And so that was Wing Chun. And I studied a little bit of that. Uh, I wouldn't have found him if I hadn't been into MMA. Um... Joey Crane, my 1985 Impala, I found out, thanks to a combination of a protractor and the coyote drag strip, that, that the 85 Impala pegs at 127, uh, I'm just saying that I... I know that from the protractor. That's it was a protractor. Okay, I just want to say that. Okay, um, Dolores, uh, I loved your post on Facebook. You found your calling, um, Mandy Owens. I always would have loved to have you as the rifle captain because I uh, wanted to be drum major, but Becky's Facha wouldn't let me have it. She took drum major, and so I had to stay rifle captain. That's the only reason that you weren't, and Becky's Facha gotcha. I've always wanted to say that. I always wanted to say, okay. Uh, Joe Kasbaum, I think we might be the only two people in our class who knows what it means to say, I know fish. And I'm not talking about Eric Estrada's pastime. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, Amber Lentz. <coughs> the only thing I have to say to you is what I said to you last time we talked. <coughs> Pardon me. I have a, 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 I've got like a, a thing here. 
Though I love your garden with its pretty posies, you must beg its pardon if my heart discloses what is but its duty in its honest way to declare a beauty lovelier far than they ah ah ah, 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 ah. for you're the fairest flower in this bower, dear, you're the frailest blossom, gossamer. Though you're such a shyness, shyness I disclose, you're the fairest flower on earth, an American beauty rose. Iris and hollyhock, I can see them still, pink, pink, and frilly flock, dainty daffodils, sweet pea and marigold, I can see them there, poppies of fairy gold, modest maiden hair, the teasing tulips gently wave at every passing breeze, the pampered pansies slyly crave to bring us to our knees. Flowers tall, flowers small, I love them all. And yet they do but imitate the fairest flower of all. For you're the fairest flower in this bower, dear. <clears throat> you're the frailest blossom, gossamer. Though you're such a shy miss, shy miss, I disclose. You're the fairest flower on earth, an American beauty rose. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Pardon my... Okay. <clears throat> Laurie Taylor. I told you... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not supposed to get to... Oh, yeah. Okay. Lori, I told you that you would be valedictorian when we were freshmen. <clears throat> so I was right again about something. Yeah, okay. Mike Malcolmson, you are so smart, you very well could be the C student that all the A students end up working for. Uh, perhaps you could help Lori get a job. Uh, you know, just saying. Okay. <clears throat> Leah Urbis. <laughs> I still stand by my words when I say that reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Although that doesn't necessarily mean that I've exercised my mind more than I've exercised my body. I've exercised my body quite a bit more, and I'm sure that Andy Lusby would have a few things to say about that. Now, I also stand by my words when I say that your older sister, she's denser than gold. And as for your younger sister, your mother looks more and more like her every day. Uh, no, you have to ask her what that's all about. Uh, oh, Andy Loosby, I want to say that you have inspired me to pursue juggling. I'm only half as good as you could have ever been. And when I run into people over here in Asia, like guys that are wearing mascara, it really doesn't bother me. I actually kind of want to try to put some on and I'm just really comfortable with it. Thanks to you. So high five, Andy, uh, you know, hit me up. If you want to come over to Asia, you're welcome to like, I'll show you around anybody. I guess that goes for anybody. Um, Aaron Parks, you never gave credit where due. You never told anybody that just before you called in that bomb threat on your little ham radio, that we were in Agler's chemistry class and I had commented that ham radios were capable of making phone calls. I never told you to make any bomb threats or do anything illegal. I just brought up the topic of the phone call. And it wasn't long after that that you figured out how you could uh, make or mess up everybody's day. 
He never gave credit where due. I mean, what the heck? But Aaron, thank you very much for teaching us all at an early age that we should never trust a guy who carries a briefcase. Excuse me. Uh, where am I with this? Uh, Aaron Parks. Amanda Ward, you're right. You looked hot. Okay. Emily, I can never forget the day that I wanted to read some verse out of the Bible to you. You thought I was going to preach. I was just going to read something. And you were like, you ran away. You're like, Get away from me, Bible boy. And I just really love that. I'm not going to say why. Laura Porteosaurus. I was going to say something, but I, I, it slipped my mind. Laura McMahon, we elected you vice president and you missed the last, uh, what, 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 what was it called? Uh, reunion. And so I move that we impeach Laura from vice president and put me there instead. Uh, except, except I'm not there either. Uh, okay. Never mind. Um, we'll just <clears throat> forget about that. Anyhow, as my uh, co-class politician, I okay. I suppose she can stay. Um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> somber tone. There's someone uh, very specific. Um, hear me. Listen. Listen to me. I never told you guys this because a fish uh, doesn't know it's in water. A fish doesn't know it wants to swim. A fish only knows it wants to go. And I just never told you guys this. So everything I'm going to tell you, I've shared with Jen Newman and I asked her, if she thought, and Juanita, I shared a bunch of this with Juanita. Um, I asked her if she thought that I should call Andy's mom and tell her. And she said, absolutely. And so I tracked her down and talked with her on the phone two days ago. Um, and you got, I just need to tell you guys this. I need to tell you the good news. You never knew that Andy and I had a, a secret uh, connection. Andy's mother, I think Andy was the only one in our class that was younger than me. Um, Andy's mother and my mother and Tyler Schuberg's mother, Tyler Schuberg, we were in... Uh, a Lamaze class together, or they were, well, I mean, we were there because you know, we were all in the womb. And when, you know, as Andy and I grew up, uh, our mothers would talk about the other. Um, it, it wasn't good or bad. It's just the other family was a household name. Andy, Andy's mother would talk about me and my mother and my mother would talk about Andy and his mother. It wasn't, it wasn't often, but it was normal. And Bill Webster was there. As I remember, um, we, I, I went to Andy's birthday party in kindergarten and we stayed at his house. His dad was with us and we watched karate kid. It was awesome. And, um, Andy and I just, we, we, we just, it's like we were automatic friends at any time we could always talk to each other. We never needed a reason to walk up to the other and say hi or share any random idea. It's, it's like one of those ongoing conversations. Um, it, 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 it was like a, a, a secret brother type of a thing that we just had. And in the eighth grade, um, while you all went to Cedar Point two hours late, I mean, Cedar Point opens at seven and it takes four and a half hours to get there at least. I mean, if, if you don't leave by 3 a.m., then, you know, you're late. You know, it, it's just so... 
we were like, what's the point? You guys were leaving at 5, well, be at the school at 5.30 or something like that. And like, like you're probably going to get out of there maybe before 6 if you're lucky. We were like, what's the point? We've been to Cedar Point. This is going to be lame. And so uh, Andy's mother had the idea that we just skip school that day in the 8th grade and hang out at my house. So Andy and I went and hung out at my house. Uh, he stayed the night in the 8th grade. And I pulled out my synthesizer keyboard, and he told me what all the different synthesizing sound effects were and meant. And um, we walked out in our backwoods, grabbed a machete, and hacked on a basswood tree. And this is, this is who Andy was. This is my tree, my machete, and my house. And we're hacking down this tree, and Andy like knew how to cut the thing right to make it cut down. Because we don't like basswood trees. Basswood... It's like a weed. It grows really fast and it takes the space of the other healthy trees. And when the thing started to fall down, Andy handed me the machete very quickly. Like he wanted me to cut the thing to make sure that I was the one to bring it all the way down because it was at my basswood tree at my house. Like that's, that's who Andy was always thinking about other people. And, uh, I, I'm only telling you all this now because I, I told Andy's mother this on the phone uh, two days ago. We had a conversation in the eighth grade in choir class. We were in choir together in eighth and ninth grade. We went to state choir festival together. In, in Osborne's uh, teaching time, like 25 years or something, only one time did the choir ever go to state festival, and that's when Andy and I were there. Um, and we were, we had a substitute teacher in the eighth grade, <clears throat> excuse me. And for some reason, uh, Satan worship uh, was like Satanism or whatever it was called, was a topic in the news and at school. It was a, it was a thing many people were talking about, good, bad, whatever. Um, I, I think some guy had just founded the Church of Satan and that was also kind of a newish sort of like it was kind of new maybe. And so we were talking, having one of our heavily politically minded uh, discussions, which we loved to get into. Uh, I mean, because like Andy and I kind of were some of, if not the only people that we knew that cared deeply about any of those topics at all. And we loved talking about those things. We, 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 just, we didn't care if we agreed or not. We loved talking about it. Politics, we usually agree on a lot of things. Um, and he asked me, he said, do you think Satan worship should be illegal? And I said, well, eighth grade choir class substitute teacher watching a movie, he and I are off to the side. Uh, talking just with us, with, with, among ourselves. He said, do you think... Satan worship should be illegal, like the government should outlaw it. And I said, well, um, I think that if a Satan worshiper commits a crime, uh, such as murder or something else, in the act of worshiping Satan, that that Satan worshiper should be charged with that crime only, not with worshiping Satan, but only with that crime. But... God allows people to worship Satan. Christians and the government should also. And Andy said, you know, I think you're about the most level-headed Christian I've ever met. Um, and uh, that was pretty much how the conversation went. I repeated it a few times. I repeated some sentences, but it was pretty much word for word how that conversation went. Um, I, I never told anybody. Um, I, I just, our friends, like my friends were all the Trinity Fellowship Youth Group people who went to the Mass Seance Center, interestingly enough. So I knew a lot of the other people at the Mass Seance Center because they were all friends from Trinity's Youth Group. I don't know how they all got there. Um, you know, just so you know, my church had this super egghead, big vocabulary word pastor and Spock from Star Trek was his role model. And I think that kind of made me a little bit asocial. And I think that rubbed a little bit of churchianity culture into me. I had a strong falling out with him. Um, I, I even taught his kid piano lessons. 
Um, his kid also played French horn. Um, but that, like, my friends and Andy's friends, it was never intentional or planned. It was just culture. Um, I know that you're all watching this. Um, you guys kind of unintentionally didn't let Andy and I be friends. Like, you know, and it's all understandable. Like, it's all understandable. Um, but Andy and I already were friends before we were born. And you guys just never knew. Um, I, uh, I want to say, uh, you know, I wasn't chasing Satanism. And uh, to Andy's friends, you know who you are. I mean, we're friends. We talk still. Um, I was never trying to go preach at him. Uh, we were just friends and didn't know it. Uh, we just, we were, we, we were Andy and Jesse. In fact, I was almost named Andy when, uh, and, and for whatever reason, my parents decided to give me uh, Jesse. The name just randomly came to them both. It was weird. So I studied Bible in college. Now, pardon me. I am not trying to preach or persuade anybody of any religious opinion. I'm giving you my perspective. I remember someone said around about the funeral time, funeral preparation was in discussion at, at the school and everywhere in the hallways. Someone said that it was very sad because of where we all know he is or something like that. It was, it was, it was the presumed place that no one would say of where he ended up or whatever. Um, by the way, when we were taking the white roses and setting them on the casket, um, I walked over and put my hand on, on Andy's mother's shoulder and, and gave her a long look and she knew who I was and she, she like, you know, I gave her this loving look, but I kind of felt like I wasn't allowed to talk to her too long or some people would like, like, Get away, get away, Jesse, get away, Bible boy. You're going to, and it's like nobody knew what my interest was, what, what Andy and I interest was, was with each other. We just had this automatic friendship. Um, because of the presumed place he went, I want to tell you a different story. Uh, this is what I told Andy's mother a few days ago. I called her on the phone and I'm not going to say her name. I know her name. Um, I mean, right, right away when I found out the news at school, I went to the payphone and I called my mother and I told her what happened. And she said, Oh, and she said, I'm so sorry for her mother. She says, Oh, you know, his mother. Um, cause we knew, we, we knew them. Um, my Bible opinion, I studied Bible in college. I went to the Moody Bible Institute. I have enough Bible credits. I could cut them in half and have two majors in Bible. I'm overqualified to be an ordinary pastor at most small churches. Um, I don't have a master's degree, but I actually had master's degree students in my Greek classroom. I've stu I've, I studied Greek. I translated the book of Revelation from Greek into English. So I'm giving you my Bible education perspective on why I think Andy very well could likely be in heaven in a reason that Ned Flanders would agree with, uh, so to speak. Now, while I love Bible, I am not pleased with Sunday morning at all. Jesus said, if you receive me, you receive the one who sent me. Now I am sending you. He said these things together. A lot of people will say, oh, I'll quote Jesus, if you receive me, you receive the one who sent me. But in the same, like, in the same breath, Jesus goes on and says, now I am sending you. Pardon me. There's a, a logical connection here that if people receive others from Jesus, they also receive Jesus by proxy. And in the eighth grade, it was right there. Andy received me and my, my Jesus 
in my, my version of Jesus. I said what I said about Satan worshipers not being outlawed because um, that's the Jesus that I know. That's justice. That, that I get that from my, that's Jesse's view of Jesus from the Bible, not Sunday morning, from the Bible that teaches me that. I don't let anybody tell me what to believe. I get my belief from the Bible alone. And Andy accepted and liked and welcomed that idea. Arguably, arguably, that could be accepting Jesus by proxy of Jesse's version of Jesus. Every version of Jesus that Andy rejected was a lie about Jesus, a fake Jesus, from a lie that was told and originated somewhere, sometime, on a Sunday morning. The only Jesus Andy ever rejected was a Jesus of someone's Sunday morning. Not every Sunday morning, not every Sunday morning Christian, but lies that came from Sunday morning somewhere. And if I didn't have so much Sunday morning culture in me, Andy's friends, you, some of you, would not have felt defensive around me. And my friends, well, I might not have been so bubbled up that they would have rejected Andy if he got close. Um, arguably, Sunday morning killed Andy. Um, now, I mean, the Jesus I know is happy and has hope. And if I have any regret, it was that I allowed my non-Bible, Sunday morning's optional. And I allowed that optional culture to so infest me that Andy and I couldn't get together. Andy in some ways was a little bit weird uh, to, to my culture. And that kept me from calling him on the phone and talking more. And I wish that I had gone over to see him more, but I firmly believe that I will be seeing him again. Um, I don't know, for what it's worth, I mean, I've prayed to the Lord and I told the Lord, um, that if Andy does need to burn in hell, that it's not for any reason that I know. And uh, if Andy doesn't have a place in heaven, he's welcome to stay at mine. Um, I, so if I have a regret, it's that I let Sunday morning culture uh, be a barrier between us. And I wish that I could have taken him, just the pure Jesus, in the happiness and given Andy reasons uh, to, to go on and be happy living, whether or not he, he decided to pass the spelling test, you know, okay, who's God? How do you spell his name? Okay, you can go in. Like, regardless of that thing, um, I only wish that I'd gone over and visited more. But when I told Andy's mother that, she said to me, but you know, Jesse, don't live in regret. I don't live in what would have been and what could have been because you can do that forever. I look at the happy things and I, I look at the happy times. And she said, yes, uh, the Satan worship thing was a fascination. I myself, I, I don't think Andy ever was serious about being the type of Satanist that lies to people and deceives people so he can get personal power. It was just... It was the most interesting thing in his life because Sunday morning is boring and he'd had enough of that. Um, Annie's mother said, she said, I believe in God and I go to church and uh, I never try to tell anyone how to live and that works for me. And it doesn't work for a lot of people, but it works for me. Um, and so, you know, when I called her on the phone, I said, I said her first and last name. I said, is this uh, Andy's mom? And she said, yes. I said, I'm Jesse Steele. And she said, I know who you are. I know you. And I, I said, first, I want to thank you for the idea. Because Andy told me, we were debating the Cedar Point trip. And Andy told me, my mom had an idea, Jess. Um, well, let's just skip school and like, I can stay at your place or you can stay at mine or something. Um, let's just skip school. Uh, so I, I, I told her this on the phone and I said, I want to thank you for that suggestion to skip school on the Cedar Point trip thing. And she said, 
I I forgot that I ever had the idea. <laughs> and I said, it's just proof that Alzheimer's can set in at 29 years old. And she said, oh. <laughs> so Andy's mother's very, very happy. And um, uh, it was a delight to talk to her. And I, I really hope that I can talk to her and pick up a little bit of her sunshine more often. Um, I, I, I want to add, I, I want to say something else about Andy. Um, I wrote I wrote these down, and then I've got one more theology thing to just explain. Maybe you care or not. It's just it's my own theology little thing. I guess I've, again I've got my little Bible perspective. Believe what you want, but I have my own conservative Bible. Jesus only saves, not some all dogs go to heaven rot gut. Because there's always got to be someone that doesn't. But like um, I've got my own solid Bible reasons for why I think that. At the funeral, we presumed he was in the wrong place. Um, Andy would always come up to me and talk about Linux, Linux, Linux. And he'd explain to me what it was. And I use Linux. I'm using Linux to record this video. I make money using Linux. I, I write stuff with other programmers on the internet and contribute code with Linux. And not a day goes by that I turn on my computer and use Linux that I don't think about Andy. And that I don't wish I could call him and just talk about this little universe. And I skate. There's always been a little dark, maybe you could call it a dark, dark side. It feels dark. Um... It's, I mean, my shirt's dark, I guess. I, I made this shirt over here in Asia. I've been living an interesting life over here in Asia, by the way. Um, but th there's, there's not a day um, that I don't go skating and wish that Andy was there. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm the skater kid that doesn't look like a skater kid when I walk down the street. And I've... Um, I've just always felt a connection to skaters uh, and, and whatever rebels and stuff. And, and, you know, I'm over here in Asia and I see kids wearing Beavis and Butthead shirts and I never watched an episode of Beavis and Butthead, uh, but I recognize what's on the shirt and I'll tell the, the agent, I'll say, you know who that is on your shirt, don't you? That's Beavis and Butthead. And I know who they are because of Andy. Um, okay. I, one other thing. I just need to say this. When Jacques had his BBS and the BBSs were a thing, I gave Jacques and Andy both ten dollars for having a BBS. I just and I, I gave school. I gave and I said, Andy, here's ten dollars off because you have a BBS. I said, here, and he said, whoa, thanks. Like and and he offered he offered to give me a bunch of porn, uh, and I I politely uh, declined. Uh, but uh, I'm sure knowing Andy, it would have been it would have been the best. It would have been the greatest porn. The best the best better than any porn Trump ever would have had. By the way, uh, but. That was Andy. He was righteous, uh, fair. Righteous means, if you look, in the Bible sense, righteous means fair. He was honest. He would think about others and be honest and do what's right with people. And that's my evidence for why I don't think that he ever really was interested in Satan worship. It was just a fad to be involved with. Um, remember what I said about the longitude and the trail of tears? When there's, uh, there are places that Freak accidents happen, and a lot of people die, and it seems to have no reason. Believe what you want, I won't try to impose my views or tell anyone else how they should live. But for my own opinion, this makes sense to me, that uh, from uh, America to over here in Asia, I know places where I've prayed that have then been in the newspaper two weeks and two months later. And no one knows that I prayed there, and I know what praying on places does for things. I was at the skate park and it was hot, tropical in Taiwan. And I uh, started praying for a uh, wind and a 13 year old or whatever, 14, I don't know, was, was there. And I'm praying for wind and wind starts blowing. And that kid says, wow, praying to Jesus really works. And he went to school uh, and uh, played volleyball threw out his neck. It really hurt. He laid his hand on his neck and prayed for Jesus to heal it and the pain went away. Later on, the kid went home, was playing on his phone instead of going to sleep 
and the Wi-Fi shut off, so he had to use metered power or metered internet, which wasn't going to work. And he decided that Jesus, he, he wondered if I had prayed for Jesus to shut off his Wi-Fi so that he would do the right thing. And he decided to become a Christian and, you know, right there. And he said, I, I want to believe in Jesus. I want to become a Christian because I believe this prayer thing works. And I never tried to proselytize him. And I've always told him that I love Jesus and can't stand most Sunday morning. And... Um, I wish I could have told Andy the same thing back then, but prayer works for me and I've seen prayer work. And so when I look at all that uh, and, and I talk about the trail of tears and the freak car accidents at the same place that all this injustice happened, you know, uh, a few years ago, as I understand, um, you know, his mother explained to me, uh, Andy's father also took his own life. And there was a lot of stuff there that didn't make sense. And when we consider um, the neighbor, I'm, I'm not going to say name, uh, that's three people right there in that vicinity that all died uh, near that place. And, you know, three points make a line. And I think there could possibly have been uh, a thing there. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to try to digest it too much, but when I believe in, in demons and whatever spiritual dark forces latching onto a territory, um, I think it's very reasonable to think that there could have been some evil thing there that was just uh, out to get people, good, perfectly good people minding their own business. They had nothing to do with it. They didn't invite it. There was just that location had some invisible monster there after people. And that tells me, and my, it works for me, that uh, I don't think Andy really was fascinated in Satan worship at all. I think some thing there, some invisible thing from hundreds of years ago, might have been fascinated in Andy, interested in Andy. And that's where all that came from. It wasn't even him. Um, the, the theology thing, I'll close with this. Um, th this is kind of a, of a teaching that I haven't seen anywhere in the church. I get it from the Bible. I've read the book of Revelation a hundred times. I translated it from Greek into English. And bear with me on this. I'm not trying to preach at all. I'm explaining my thinking. John, you've heard of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so whoever believes would have eternal life. Believe. Believe in Jesus is the teaching. The believe in Jesus teaching, the word believe, faith, believe, comes largely all throughout the whole Bible, book of Genesis, but mostly from John, the book of John, the gospel of John, the story about Jesus' life, John. That's the heaviest by far book in the Bible where we get the teaching that you must believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus, believe, believe. That's John. Okay. John wrote the book of Revelation. He was on an island, saw this vision, wrote it. That's the book of Revelation. He doesn't use the word believe once. I translated it from Greek. I know. He doesn't talk about believe. Believing. Mr. Believe Jesus doesn't talk about believing Jesus when he saw heaven. Now, that doesn't mean that he was wrong when he says believe Jesus. In the book of John, we have a happy life now. By believing Jesus. Not the religious institution that killed Jesus. Not the religious teachers that killed Jesus. We have happiness and healing and power to pray and drive out demons and make the world a happy place by believing Jesus. That's, that's the book of John. In the book of Revelation, when we see hell, when the people in hell wake up to stand before the judgment, in front of the big throne, before the full eternity thing comes. There's no believing in Jesus that's mentioned there. Not there. At the big grand judgment for eternity, the thing that matters is the book of life. All the books are open. We're judged by what's in the books. And then another book was opened. The book of life was written before earth was made. Before there was no Jesus, there was no Adam, there was no Moses, no Ten Commandments, no teaching about God, no Father Abraham, no Garden of Eden. Before all of that, names were written in the book, and that book decides who goes to heaven and hell forever. Um, that book, I think, provides a lot of explanation 
for people like Andy, good people like Andy. And, you know, John Lennon said it. There will be an answer. Let it be. I love you all very much. And I thought about this for 20 years before saying anything. And I think it's high time that I say something. I wish I'd have said something earlier, 10 years ago, when I could have said it maybe to Andy's dad. But when I said that to Andy's mom, and she said, Jess, don't live in regret. Don't live in regret. Look at the happy things. When I think of Andy, I think of all the so many, the happy times. I think of the happy times. And when I think of all you guys, including Andy, I think of happy times. And uh, let's talk more. I hope that all of you take opportunity to make videos and that we continue the group. And I'm looking forward to number 30 